Hello, my name is Kathleen Curley and I'm a Scottish artist. I've always done art at school, I've grown up doing it. I find it very therapeutic and natural. Like at school, I, at lunchtime, I was always in the art rooms. I'd always stay behind after class, just painting and just having fun doing art. After school, I went to Cardona College for a portfolio prep year. And that's where my love of abstract art kind of grew from. I had this tutor that was um, teaching me about abstract art and he described it as the artist is trying to abstract reality to convey uh, either a theme or an emotion and they can explore these conceptual themes. He kind of described it simpler to me that it's not what it is but how it is and that's really stuck with me like when I eventually went to art school. I then went to Glasgow School of Art where I studied painting and printmaking for my BA. I really enjoyed my four years there. It was very much more experimental and free flowing. And that's kind of where my love of abstract art and being a contemporary artist really flourished. My biggest influences at the moment. Um, so right now, my general practice is about marbling, which is a printmaking technique. I've been really delving into the history of it, so that's been influencing my work quite significantly. So I've been influenced to its like, historical 12th century Japanese style and the 16th century Turkish style. Um, I've also a big fan of the German contemporary marble artist Christine Barsch, especially her interview with London MoMA in 2020. Her work is really reminiscent of like microscopic images of bacteria and it's like an elevated version of the marbling technique. I find these like natural lines and from science in form of microscopic images of like atoms and cells really influence with my work and how these natural lines are formed. So there's a like, contemporary artist called Barbara Nichols. She does these incredible watercolour paintings. And if you can see my work, I'm a big fan of colour and her use of colour and natural line is just gorgeous. I've definitely influenced me. Um, I'm also a big fan of Rachel Jones. Um, I think her work is so reminiscent of the abstract expressionism movement, even though she is like a current artist at the moment. And just how vibrant and so much energy has been put into her pieces is really gorgeous. I'm currently focusing on exploring where I can take marbling. So I've been using it to dye different fabrics and seeing where I can get from there and what can be created from it. Um, I consider marbling as a form of printmaking that captures a moving pattern into a fixed image. I've been using different types of surfaces. I've dyed it as wallpaper with a photocopier. Um, I usually just use silk and satins. I want to create a sensory experience for the viewer by um, containing different techniques of the handmade and the fabricated, the analogue and the digital. Currently right now, um, in my research, I found 100 year old books of poetry and they had end sheets with marbling inside them. Traditionally, marbling was used as a luxury for books to kind of promote how expensive they were. To reference this, I've been dying the edges of books and I'm hoping to create some sort of like library with them and create, you know, on a big, big, much, much larger scale. And then eventually I want to have the audience interact with the library, being able to read the books and create the piece into more of an interactive work of art rather than just something that should be stared at and propped up on a shelf, quite literally. For me, the biggest challenge of being an artist is staying motivated. I've recently just graduated from Glasgow School of Art and something I've struggled with and I'm still working towards is keep making work no matter what and using your sketchbook every day. I think there's this kind of nervousness of getting in your own head and being like, oh, it's not good enough. But I think you do learn more from your mistakes than you do from your successes. And that's how you're going to learn how to keep going on. Like you're going to learn what you don't like, which will help you produce what you do like and overall create a wonderful piece of art. Advice I would give to my younger self is to be more confident and be more proud of what you've done. I think something I've been always shy about is my like sketchbook because I always hide them in my bag. I've never shown them to anyone and I put so much pressure on myself to be the best academically when actual fact it really doesn't matter. You just have to make work that you like and you think is good and that should just be the end goal. In my practice, I found silk and satin to be the most elegant material that really enticed the viewer. 
to demonstrate the elegance of silk, I began dyeing opera gloves, influenced by Suzanne Jackson's elongated hand paintings. These are definitely an unconventional technique for me and methods. Um, my work became much more theatrical in the glove pieces, and I used mannequin scans to really enhance the over-the-top nature that I used for my most uh, recent degree show. The presentation of the gloves reflects that they are to be worn rather than to be seen as a sculpture. There was also this uh, uni project that I had recorded videos of me burning my work and then reversing the videos of it to kind of reveal the work. It was re weirdly therapeutic, like destroying your own work, but it was definitely one of the weird stands out for art school for me. But I really enjoyed doing them. When I'm creating work, I like to have like a bit of background music on or a podcast. I don't like painting in silence. I think it's quite distracting. Um, I think the best reaction I've had from someone to my work was uh, they didn't know I was the person who made the gloves and I've had people just like try them on and goof about with them and seeing how much joy that brought to someone who just thought it was like some campy fun thing. I really enjoyed seeing that's kind of what I want people to take away from my work. I want them to enjoy it. I want them to interact. I want them to get like to understand like the bright colours and immediately bring a joy and smile to their face. Ultimately, the my work I want is to successfully display my interest in marbling and how I have elevated it from abstract patterns to contemporary art. And what marbling has like traditionally in the past maybe five years has been seen as like a fast fashion trend and I want to elevate and highlight its rich history and to show how beautiful the technique is and the pattern is. I find the technique and the whole style of marbling really similar to the abstract expressionism movement. I think there are certain elements that really connect onto it and I think it just kind of enhances my own love for abstract art. Uh, but thank you so much for listening and having me. My social media is at Kathleen Crilly Art. Uh, please follow me. But again, thank you so much and have a nice day.